When was the last time of the night? Flash flood watches as well. One to three inches of rain. Some spots can get as much as four or five inches of rain. So here's what you need to know. The heavy rain gets going really first thing in southern New Jersey and overspreads the area during the day. Heaviest rain into the... Speaking to the soul. The world flashing past is still yet to explore. Look out the window. The summer of Jeep is here. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months, plus no monthly payments for 90 days on select 2020 Jeep brand vehicles. Hi, everyone. I'm meteorologist Lee Goldberg. Thanks for clicking on ABC 7 NY for your wake-up weather. It's an AccuWeather alert for Tropical Storm Faye, which is moving toward our area during the day on Friday. Tropical Storm warnings up for Friday and Friday night, especially into the first part of the night. Flash flood watches as well. One to three inches of rain. Some spots can get as much as four or five inches of rain. So here's what you need to know. The heavy rain gets going really first thing in southern New Jersey, then overspreads the area during the day. Heaviest rain into the first part of tomorrow night. This is moving right along, so we'll improve on Saturday. The area rainfall totals could cause street flood even minor coastal flooding as well. Gusty. One, I'm meteorologist Lee Goldberg in the Eyewitness News AccuWeather Center, and we continue to track Tropical Storm Faye. Pretty unbelievable timing right now. We just came off the 8 o'clock advisory from the Hurricane Center, but Faye is not far from New York City. I mean, really just a few miles from the southern tip of Staten Island and working over parts of New Jersey right now. And even though the storm has weakened and the heaviest rain is certainly by the boards, look at the low visibility. I mean, it's a rough ride across the George Washington Bridge. I'm going to just walk back to our little weather cave here behind our set. I'm just going to change the view and look right over the Upper West Side here. So just bear with me while I do this. And there you go. So that's what it looks like on the Upper West Side as we just went through another rain band here. I mean, not particularly heavy, but keeping it wet and stacking up the total. So there's still some funding on the roads. There's still some puddles. You still have to be very careful where the visibility goes down now that the sun is down. So, you know, it's not that the dangers are totally done with this particular storm. All right, so far, we've got two and a half inches of rain in New York City, over two inches in parts of southern New Jersey, uh, nearly two inches in Sussex, an inch in White Plains, and obviously the lighter amounts are over eastern Long Island. Your rain has just been more sporadic and you've been farther away from the center. And we're still stacking up some at least significant rain in places like Danbury and into the Poughkeepsie area right now. All right, so what I did was I did a close-up view on the wind field over parts of New Jersey, and you can see right where that center is. Look at this. It's right over parts of Middlesex County near Old Bridge, moving northward on Route 9. So it could certainly be over the Outer Bridge crossing over parts of uh, like Annadale and Pleasant Plains section of Staten Island. Now, I don't want you to get nervous saying, listen, the center of the tropical storm is going over because the heaviest rain is very much displaced from the center of circulation. It's well to the north. So as the center goes over, uh, it's not like your typical tropical system where you're getting into an eye wall or anything like that. The winds are definitely gusty on the uh, right side of the center here in the northeast quarter. We typically see that. So the fact that it's going just to the west of New York City, that allows still some of the stronger wind gusts, which are around 40 miles an hour or so, to still be in the city and points eastward. Now, when you look at this radar, number one, you see that heavier tropical rain band that really crushed the area earlier. Uh, there's still some heavy rain over parts of northernmost Sullivan, Ulster, and Dutchess County, and certainly still back into eastern Pennsylvania, which has really got some heavy rain near the I-84 corridor. But even this lighter rain that you're seeing right here, and again, here's the circulation center, even this lighter rain, it's worse than the radar indicating right now. That rain comes in, and it's still pretty blinding in some spots, so it, it can lower visibility. No, it's not the rainfall rates of one to two inches an hour, but it's still some decent blowing rains across the area that are continuing until the center gets north of where you are. And even on the southern side of that center, there are still some light showers. So still, we're going through the overnight and after midnight with still some leftover light showers. All right, so keep the details on the 8 o'clock advisory. Faye has weakened a little bit more. Obviously, with the storm center overland, that's going to happen. Uh, sustained 45 miles an hour. Now, no one's seen that across the tri-state area. A lot of that is probably offshore and winds that are aloft that aren't getting down to the surface. But there are certainly some gusts on the eastern side of the storm along the coastline that are getting close to 40 miles an hour. And you can see that we're losing some of the support from some of the heavier rain off to the north and west. All right, so this is the 8 o'clock track. And you can see how now earlier in the day it was almost going right up the gut over New York City. So it has the track just to the west of New York City going through Essex, Hudson, Bergen, um, 
you know, parts of Passaic County and then going into the Hudson Valley. So when we see an eyewitness news at 11, it's probably just west of New York City or maybe moving toward Bergen County. It moves through the Hudson Valley during the overnight hours, the wee hours, and then it starts racing through upstate New York, past Albany, into like, like Burlington, Vermont, and by tomorrow afternoon, we'll be able to see the, the remnant center of the storm as a, a tropical depression or tropical low that's sitting over parts of Canada. Now, in terms of the winds, we've had some gusts of JFK at 43 miles an hour, gusts of ice up around 40 miles an hour. Uh, the wind was howling in Atlantic City earlier in the day, over 40 miles an hour. So we get still some of these stronger gusts. You see, even in the last hour, a gust of JFK at about 35 miles an hour. Uh, so as this center goes right here, I'm going to show you a future cast. And this is interesting. So it's doing a nice job depicting the center right here. Now look what happens. So this is a 10 o'clock time stamp here. And you see the center is depicted close to, let's say, uh, Oakland, New Jersey. And you have stronger winds right on the right side of it. So a 36 mile per hour gust in the park, still 40 mile per hour gusts in Connecticut and Long Island, some gusty winds in the Hudson Valley. I mean, not damaging winds, but certainly still gusty and you might hear them out your window overnight. And that'll continue to midnight as the storm, but let's say moves over Newburgh and is running right up the Hudson River Valley and then it heads away. And just a little breeze left over as we go into the morning hours on Saturday. And so here's the future cast. And again, even though the heaviest rain band well to the north, which is weakened itself, there are some occasional scattered downpours that are rotating around the center. So once that gets north of New York City after 1130 or midnight, now we just have a couple of leftover sprinkles. And after that, the skies will try to break toward dawn. But we're still getting some occasional downpours, even in the 11 o'clock to midnight hour across uh, really, Niagara in New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, parts of uh, Long Island as well. It's 1.30 in the morning. The storm's still working up to, let's say, Kingston, New York. Um, and again, most of the heavy rain or any rain at all is north of the city. By morning, we've got clouds, a few breaks in there, probably some patchy fog as well. Sun breaks through. Problem is things are still very unstable during the day tomorrow. So I do think we'll have some scattered thunderstorms that pop up in the afternoon hours. And some of these could go strong to severe with some very gusty winds and heavy downpours and dangerous lightning. So keep an eye on the sky in the afternoon hours. It will be okay to get outside during the day, but then make sure you have a, a place of safety to get in as you go through the afternoon hours with these stronger storms. And they're more likely off to the north and west, but I think even a couple could go down the coast. Look at this. Storm prediction is a large area of green, which means a marginal risk for severe weather, but more isolated severe storms during the afternoon hours. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Phase rain and wind are long gone by dawn. The strong storms are again possible during the afternoon hours on Saturday. It's going to be hot and sunnier on Sunday with just a stray storm primarily off to the north and west. Your accurate weather forecast at 7 a.m. Mostly cloudy, patchy fog, warm and muggy, 75. Tomorrow's a high of 88. It's warm and humid. Clouds break for sun, although you're never going to get rid of the cloudiness tomorrow. Times it looks bright. And then strong afternoon storms and a, a very stuffy high of about 8 degrees. 74 tomorrow night, early evening storm, then partly cloudy, warm and sticky. Here's an early look at your seven day. Uh, I reserve the right to just pull things before 11 o'clock, but right now it's hot and sunnier on Sunday at about 90. There is a better threat of some thunderstorms on Monday. I do think we'll be storm tracking in the afternoon. Behind that little piece of energy, the humidity drops a little bit, so it's more moderate humidity on Tuesday. Both days are in the upper 80s. Then we start to crank up the heat. 90 on Wednesday, hot and humid. Not much of a trigger for storms. On Thursday, there might be an afternoon storm. We're in the low to mid-90s. That's probably the hottest day. I mean, I might even be a little conservative with that 93. And then we should establish our first heat wave of the season. Earlier, I thought we might be able to do it earlier in the week, but we'll probably come up short. We'll leave about 92 on Friday. We should establish our first heat wave of the season. And if I get this right, I think we've had six or seven 90 degree days. So we could be in double digit 90 degree days uh, for the season. By the time we get to the end of the week, the typical number is around 15 to 17 for New York City during the season. But more importantly, still tracking Tropical Storm Fay. We're going to get an update just before our 11 o'clock show. So we'll pass along that advisory. It'll be interesting to see whether the center of circulation uh, does go down to the books is going over New York City. It looks like right now it's going to go just to the west of the city. But this was the first landfalling tropical system in the tri-state area since Irene back in 2011. And if you're thinking about Sandy, that technically made landfall near Little Egg Harbor as a post-tropical cyclone. I know, it, it, it shouldn't be that way. It's the way it is. So it's Irene back in 2011. So pretty impressive stuff. And the fact that it happened on July 10th is pretty wild because normally we'd see tropical systems impact the area closer to the late August, September, and October time frame. Uh, so going forward, the threats are just going to be some additional rain, some gusty winds, 
um, but nothing terribly heavy overnight. You just have to watch for some ponding on roadways if you do have to head out and about, but I wouldn't really suggest doing any traveling tonight. Oh, one more thing with the beach weather improving over the weekend, the rip current risk is going to stay very high through tomorrow, so dangerous for swimmers and boaters. Definitely choppy in the morning, maybe some six, eight foot waves early dropping down to about four or five footers during the afternoon hours. All right, that's the way it's shaping up. Thanks for clicking on ABC 7 and why I'll see you for complete coverage on Eyewitnesses in 11. Stay safe. And once again, thanks for sticking with us on ABC 7 and why as we continue our coverage of Tropical Storm Fay, new 2 o'clock advisory coming out, just sort of digesting it and analyzing some of the data. Uh, times of torrential rain with this storm will last into the evening hours. That's our big concern. And we're getting into the brunt of some of those heavy rains even right now in parts of northern New Jersey and into New York City. Our biggest concern is that flood threat. These big rainfall rates and these gully washing rainfall uh, that's going to be coming in during the afternoon hours. We are concerned about gusty winds. There can be some 50 mile per hour gusts. Obviously dangerous rip currents, but it's not the day where the beaches are going to be too crowded. High surf is causing some minor beach erosion. The one good part about a storm like this, because you might say, well, are we worried about a surge and about a big coastal flood situation? That is not the case with this. Number one, we are not in a, a full moon right now or new moon. And the other thing is, is that everything's moving so quickly uh, that there hasn't been this uh, push of water toward our coastline with this situation. So, uh, you know, at least it's happening in a, in a short period of time. So we're not expecting uh, other than a little splash over here and there and some minor to isolated moderate coastal this is not a major coastal flooding event this is all about the big rainfall so tropical storm warnings continue for our coastline here into the evening hours and now we've got some new flood warnings and that's with the onset of some of this heavier rain that's moving into the five borough especially down the shore you have some flood warnings too and over central new jersey as well so we're raining at some big rates it's a blinding rainfall waters can come up very quickly it's one of those things where please you can try to limit or just cancel your travel if you can through the afternoon hours and if you do have to be out in Nebraska it's absolutely necessary for you to be out and uh, run an errand and make sure that if you do encounter water standing on roadways that you don't try to drive through it. You don't know how deep it is. It's very easy um, for you to get stranded and we've had some water rescues across the area. So our wind gusts have topped out near 40 miles an hour down the shore. So we'll expect more of that as we go into the evening hours. Just got a damage report out of Colts Neck uh, with a tree down on Route 18 and we can expect more of that as we get this driving rain. All right, it's a fascinating look at this storm. Now, it's not your classic tropical system where you see all of the rain that is basically right around the center of circulation. It's kind of displaced. So, you know, it's not your classic tropical system. They were thinking about calling it a subtropical system. But in any case, what you're going to notice is we're going to get this rain band way out ahead of the center. We'll talk about a landfall later th today and this evening along the Jersey Shore. And a lot of you will think, well, okay, it's making landfall. That's going to be the worst weather. And actually, the case is, is that although the winds may still be kicking up around the center of circulation on the Jersey Shore, the heaviest rain for much of the Jersey Shore is now over. I mean, it's not to say we can't get, you know, a little tropical downpour here, but the heaviest rain is now north and west of the center and then wrapping back up across northern New Jersey into New York City. Now, there is a feed of a tropical moisture here and thunderstorm in this arm, and there are some suggestions by our short-term computer models that this is going to train over right into New York City or maybe just to the northeast of the city late uh, – through the mid-afternoon and into the early evening, so we can really pile up the rain tolls of that with one heavy downpour after another. So we'll have to see what happens with the orientation of this as it begins to basically uh, creep along our coastline here. So it's only 20 miles away from Cape May. Let me just shut that up right there. I'm just getting all types of alerts, jazzy alerts apparently. And so it climbs up the coast, and what will happen is, is you know, we'll throw all this heavy rain into the Hudson Valley as we go into the evening hours. But right now, we've got very heavy rainfall. Let me zoom into that right here so it's just along and north of i-80 livingston getting very heavy rainfall goes back down toward flemington you see a live lightning strike right over uh, new york harbor right now and over parts of brooklyn and queens some very heavy rainfall uh, that looks like it might be over uh, maybe parts of bayside some very heavy rainfall right there you get some heavy rain over yonkers and this is all shifting north so we'll have to see it's, it's up waves of heavy rain it comes down it really pours for a while then the intensity backs off you think you're done and then it ramps up right again 
So at the 2 o'clock advisory, we've got winds of 60 miles an hour. The wind is moving, or the movement of the storm is off to the north at about 12 miles an hour. So, you know, it's only about 20 miles away from Cape May, but it may not make landfall here. But because, you know, Long Beach Island juts out here uh, and parts of coastal New Jersey, it could very well make a landfall. Landfall is when the center of the circulation, the center of a, it's not really an eye in this case, but the center of that circulation goes over land. So we'll see if that technically occurs as it moves north. This isn't too different from the track that Irene took back in 2011, which, by the way, is the last time we had a landfalling tropical system in the tri-state area. Uh, thankfully, it won't have the impact that Irene did, uh, which dropped tremendous amounts of rain on saturated ground and, and caused some devastating uh, flooding. But this won't be like that. We'll have more of a, a short-term flooding concern. Uh, and, of course, we're coming off a pretty dry pattern here. So uh, that's going to help things as well. All right, so let's look at the overall overall track. It's just, I mean, every time I look at this, it's such a head shaker to see New York City in the crosshairs of a cone of a tropical system path in July. I mean, that just doesn't make sense, but that's what's happening right now, and our water temperature is just warm enough to sustain some of the strength with this particular system that rides the shore and may go right over top of New York City. Now, if it's 5 or 10 miles west of the city or 5 or 10 miles east of the city, that is going to make a difference because we're seeing our strongest winds on the eastern side. So let's say, you know, so this storm were to go directly over Newark. Well, now you're talking about the potential for some 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts in New York City, whereas if it goes over Long Island City, the city's probably going to get more of a 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gust. So that could make a difference. You start getting toward a 50 mile per hour gust threshold. That's when you start to see more damage occur across the area. And remember, we've already saturated the ground here, so trees can certainly be vulnerable across the area. So we'll have to see where that track goes. What we already are confident about, in fact, is, you know, the heaviest rain is definitely well west of the track and, and also just on the northern side of the center. Whereas east, what we'll watch for is more thunderstorm cells that may come on shore. Remember, I showed you that sort of band of feeding rain coming in, and that's sort of a natural rotation in that. And there may be some isolated spin-ups of tornadoes that we'll have to watch about. So, so it's a more favorable situation east of the city, Connecticut and Long Island, to see the potential for an isolated tornado. In these type of situations, they're typically weak, but obviously even a weak tornado can cause significant amount of damage. Here's the plus side. We're getting some beneficial rain from this and the thing's moving right along. So by the time we get into the morning, this thing's sitting over maybe, you know, Lake George, headed over Saranac Lake into parts of maybe Burlington, Vermont by late morning. So it is long gone. So we'll wake up, well, partly sunny skies developing. And the problem is we'll actually have a severe thunderstorm potential tomorrow afternoon. All right, so here's the way the future cast is depicting this. And remember, I was watching that band of rain and, you know, the future cast is only as good as the initial information that's on it. So this is, it's not really depicting it as it is right now, showing two separate bands at two o'clock, but rather there's something right here. So let, let's go through the next time steps to see what it does. All right, so the theme is, is that we're going to see this band, which probably, it could be over parts of New York City. Maybe it's more over northern Manhattan, the Bronx, and maybe parts of northern Queens rather than over Staten Island. So I would think the heaviest rain from maybe three to six o'clock or seven o'clock is probably over northernmost New Jersey, the lower Hudson Valley, uh, northern part of the five boroughs into the north shore of Long Island, maybe eastern Long Island as well, and that's pivoting up into the Hudson Valley. Now there's still, as the center is still coming up through the area, through the first half of tonight, there will still be pulse-ups, epical downpours, it just won't be as uh, constant and organized as we've seen during the daylight hours. So I, I do think the worst is through that evening hours, and this is how we started things. And a lot going on at this hour as Faye has just made landfall. We want to begin with Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg. Lee? Sade, that is the big news at 5 o'clock. Tropical Storm Faye makes landfall just northeast of Atlantic City. The first time we've had a landfall in Tropical Storm in the tri-state area since Irene back in 2011. There's the storm center right here, and it was right here just north and east of Atlantic City. We'll see if it continues riding the Jersey Shore, if it goes over the ocean, makes another landfall in the tri-state area. Slated to go right over New York City after about 10 or 11 o'clock clock tonight. Now with the center moving northward about 14 miles an hour, the heaviest band of rain continues to move northward. So Venus dropped off in New York City, but we still have very heavy rain eastern Pennsylvania, western New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, and definitely Long Island too, and that'll continue moving off to the north as we go through the evening hours. Very heavy rain moving into places like Chappaqua right now and over to Spring Valley, places like Tuxedo, heavy rainfall. Winds down to 50 miles an hour, so there is some weakening, but it's also speeding up a little bit. The Hurricane Center still has it going straight 
straight over New York City uh, later on this evening, moving through the Hudson Valley overnight and eventually into Canada tomorrow. We're up close to two inches of rain in Central Park, over two inches down the shore, and we're going to make up for lost time here north and east of the city with the heavy bands coming over Long Island the Hudson Valley. Tropical storm warnings continue, flash flood warnings still continue, and that, of course, is the biggest threat with this particular storm. The heaviest rain shifting through New York City and to the north through the evening hours. Still some other heavy curling in around the center through the middle of the evening, and then finally things will taper off later tonight. Big raindrops on the camera there in Central Park, but the rain is definitely quieted down in the park for now. Watch out for that torrential rain north and east. We still so could fall north and east of New York City. Gusty winds at the coast. That's still going to be a thing through the evening hours because the center still has to come up over on top of us. So gusty winds, maybe some trees down, and the flash flooding still the biggest concerns. Much more on this. Your weekend AccuWeather forecast just a few minutes away. Shade and Dave.